Hello, everyone. Welcome to Podcast of the Rings. I'm particularly excited to welcome this guest. Ben has no idea who this person is, but is going to nope. fall in love with them by the end of the day. We're welcoming Adam Pranica of the Star Trek world, really. Mm. Is that Wait. where I'm from? Adam, what's your last name? Pranica. My God, you have a Star Trek last name, too. That's awesome. Yeah. Is it a Star Trek last name? Pranica? I mean, you want to watch out when you encounter the Pranicans, right? <laughs> Absolutely, it's a Star Trek last name. I did an improv yeah. Star Trek, and I feel like I definitely would have made up pran Pranicanians or something like that for sure. Yeah. I, you know, actually, I his last name, your last name, Adam, helped me realize I'm a little dyslexic because when I first met you and put your name in my phone, it was Parnica. Oh, yeah. And so I was very confused when I went to go see your live show and they introduced you as Pranica. <laughs> it's a it's a strong <laughs> Polish name that I learned is actually pronounced Pranica uh, in my Polish family. Uh, the ones who who are still there. Yeah. So you're you're, an, you're you've been ostracized from the family for anglicizing it. I yeah, I have been. I I was shamed. Shunned, yeah, it was definitely Adam Salt, to leave not the, country the when I not the guard at Ellis Island that was like, yeah, 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 what a pranica. Okay, bye. <laughs> to totally. Yeah. I, I actually. You ever go ahead? You please. ever think about what you would have tolerated coming through the Ellis Island gate? Like, mm. yeah, go ahead. And, I just want to be here. Yeah, go ahead and change it. Change it all. Call like call me you, Robert, even though I'm given my ancestral name. You think about how <laughs> going through TSA is. Uh, anytime you have to do it, just. Just make it go fast, whatever this is. Right. Okay, Can so we then, just get through it? So neither of you will enjoy traveling with me then because I'm a little sassy to them when they are unreasonable. Because, mm. like, you know, come on, guys, put the bins back. And, I, and I'm like, well, no one told me to do that. So why are you yelling? And I will talk back a little bit. I love that. You don't I, know the, I just, to put the bins back? You don't know to throw your trash out after I'm using the movie. It as a, I'm using it as a... Well, also, I have issues with that. I take umbrage with having to throw your own trash away at a movie theater. I genuinely do. I genuinely take umbrage what? with it. I do what? it. What? I think you shouldn't have to. I think that, that the culture all of a sudden shifted 15 years ago that you take your trash out because people didn't want to pay people to do that job. Um, as, I worked in a movie theater as, as one of my first first jobs and maybe that's changed my behavior since then i always pack it in and pack it out i worked at a movie theater for two minutes too i didn't love cleaning it i'm not saying that, but that it used to be that it was cleaned up for you yeah you, you want to model the, the good behavior popcorn you, they don't clean up everything that you like one i'm never leaving behind my dune popcorn bucket <laughs> eh, 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 eh. am i right oh, yeah. guys am i right fellas yeah, too many memories of your first time yeah, i'm sure exactly my first my true love um <laughs> uh, it's date night right there but uh <laughs> but just like come on jess like it, it's it's for me because like oh you know you you, you drop some popcorn because you're in a dark movie theater and you can't see everything you don't just leave like your soda candy and Why everything not? just like do you let do me, it on an airplane? Do you do it at yes. like a fast well, food no. restaurant? Let like, me be wrong. Great though. question. Let me be wrong. You know what I mean? I, I you just, are wrong. I also take it out. I don't agree with the fact that I should, but I do. I don't leave it. I'm just saying all of a sudden the culture shifted and I don't know why and I don't agree with it. So until do you so <laughs> bust your own table at a restaurant? I, because I worked it as a server for 10 years, I stack my plates for people. Uh -huh. If I go to Ikea, I'm taking the tray. Um, it, now, if I go to to like a McDonald's or a Burger King with my father, he leaves the tray, which mortifies me, but he leaves a tip. <laughs> which... So you're a, you're a tray Fair. stacker. We Fair. know this. Do you, so you consolidate your trash at a movie theater? Like, do you put your empty Milk Duds box in the popcorn container and then like the soda in there too like well to make it i don't a have a package i don't have enough sample experience to answer that properly because like i said once i realized the culture shifted i take my trash out jess kicks over her popcorn bucket opens her soda and champagne sprays it all over <laughs> and says do your job nerds <laughs> You're the reason the floor's so sticky, Truly, right? But but in, not for the in reason, most cases. Not for the reason you think, though, or or uh -huh. maybe the exact More. reason you think. Um, Adam, why do we know each other? I'm gonna make you do your own intro. All right. After uh, after you guys have beaten me up here on my opinion. Uh, you well, brought that on yourself. Don't don't try and play the victim here, okay? 
<laughs> Jump in here at any point okay. if I get this story wrong. Okay, but I great. think we met for the first time at Star Trek Las Vegas, mm-hmm. where uh, John Champion, a mutual uh, mutual friend, mutual professional contact, uh, invited me to panel with you. And when I met you for the first time, you were wearing a early season Star Trek The Next Generation uniform. It was that day? Wow. And you could not be bothered to meet me. That's not you true. Were... <laughs> I was... We, we shook hands. John, Adam, John Champion introduced us. I was... She was like <laughs> kicking her popcorn bucket. She's like, oh, I was like, hey, hey uh, you work here, right? Uh, yeah, I left all my stuff in the seat. So I just yeah, watched really... Into Darkness. Go get it, nerd. <laughs> It it felt to me like like you thought I was your PA or something, so it was pretty chilly at first. But then once we hit the stage, electric. I feel I like see. you're talking you about I, behind right before we went yeah, on. I got as it. As soon as as soon as we performed together, it was super fun and funny, and I was like, JLV. Oh yeah, it was absolutely. She rules. From that like, moment on, it was over. And so this is and, like a walk hard moment where Jess is like. Jessica Lynn Verdi has to think about her entire life before she performs. <laughs> well, I think she respects the laugh, and I hadn't gotten any until until we were on stage together, and she was like, there you go. You know what's interesting, too? I, I had a guy... So, so just for Ben's sake and the audience's sake, I was doing this morning show. I'm not a morning person. And... You were like the third day or something. Mornings in? in Vegas are particularly grim too. And and John Champion wants to make thirty minutes before for a show yeah. that doesn't have a script, which I respect. And I was there. Uh huh. But I'm tired. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not interested in being there at seven thirty before a nine o'clock show. Anyway, I think I also had experienced where I was a little too much Jessica the day before when meeting our guest before we went on and getting a really negative reaction from that person. What does that look like? What is too much Jessica? I think I am a very strong personality. And when I feel like, in particular, men don't give me the respect that I deserve for knowing something, I become very short with mm. those. And this particular did I unintentionally do that? You did. That Someone the... did it the okay. day before, and I think I was afraid to come on too strong. It I would see. be my assumption. Like, and also, so I will tell you the part of Jessica that needs to think about her entire life before she goes on stage. That was ten years ago, one hundred percent, where I'd like have headphones in my ears and I'm listening to Beyonce before I go do Cat in the Hot Tin Roof. Don't bother me, or whatever. Now yeah. improv has changed that. I'm sure I didn't have a read on you at all until we were on stage too. Yeah, it yeah. it was electric though for so sure. So what kind of show was this? Was it like just a talking about Star Trek panel? Was it a variety show? Like what are, what are we talking here? It was like the morning show before everyone went to go do the convention. So, oh, you might see this person. Will, William Shatner might be on the stage. or So, like, we would basically update everybody what they could expect, potentially, and then have you, like, Adam was there because you guys were there. Were you guests of the show? Or you just were – we were, like, helping highlight your your podcast, essentially. Right. We We weren't an official part of the convention. We were just there meeting folks and having a good time. And uh, yeah, that was that was like the first official capacity Star Trek Las Vegas thing I think either uh, either me or my co-host had ever done was that year. So was it like day three of the convention? It had to have been. Yeah. It had yeah. to okay, have been. Okay, uh, as much as I like... We were feeling pretty rough. Like, giving Jess some guff, I will give her a little grace of day three, 7.30 convention, because... No matter if you are a employee or a cosplayer or just an attendee, day three of any convention, it is like army crawling to the finish line. <laughs> and this was when they were still five days. It was five days oh! of a Star Trek convention. Although, oh my gosh. I don't think I deserve, I want to give myself credit, but I don't think I deserve that much because part of me probably <laughs> was like side eye and going, who the? hell is this guy and why oh, yeah. i don't like giving you I'm any credit sh- either jess so you know just like take your <laughs> take his it. i absolutely feel that way you described earlier though where like i can be a little much immediately and that's how i felt that morning on stage like i was just ready to attack oh and and that's when i went heck yeah this is all i want yeah. the other night i was at my boyfriend's uh record release party 
And the guitarist is very nice to me. So I was like, no, don't leave. Like, have let's have a drink. And he's like, oh, I was only going to leave because my buddy wanted to. Do you want to stay? And I was trying to make that guy, who I don't know, feel comfortable by going, you should get the <laughs> out of here. Uh-huh. <laughs> and even Alex went, oh, no, my boyfriend. Because it was too much. The guy didn't respond to it. But had it been you, and this is our first meeting, you would have gotten it and we would have moved forward. So sometimes I can put people on their heels. I'm aware of that. Are you like this? Like my my friends and my wife have have described me this way. Like I like to know where the envelope is immediately, like as soon as possible with someone so that I know where I can play. Yes. And, and I like I cast that out like as far as possible. And then then I know when to like wind it back. Oh, I just like getting it over with. I spent the entire rest of the 15 minutes with this guy trying to lather him back up to be nice <laughs> because I had cast it so That's going to make out. the floor sticky. <laughs> Again, one of my <laughs> faults of being just uh-huh. alive. Yeah, that I, I couldn't relate to that more where, you know, I'm going to be as respectful as possible. I just want to yeah. know where we're going to land because either mm-hmm. I, I can do subsurface conversations. What's fun, too, about doing this podcast with Ben is... Uh, I feel like we're very similar. I'm just a little bit more aggressive. So it's been fun mm-hmm. to like, kind of, I'm excited for you two to meet as Yeah, well. she's aggressive until I start beating her in a draft. And then she's like, oh, you're being so mean to me. Oh, why are you being so mean? And this then is just the tactic. Yeah, that works. It's, it's the tactic, though. You got to make someone mm-hmm. feel badly. Mm-hmm. So uh, speaking of conventions, I want to ask both of you this because you guys are both Star, Star Trek nerds in the best way possible. Yeah, With totally. convention, like I think we've crested the hill a little bit with like Comic-Con and stuff like that. We might be on the downslope. I don't think comic movies or any of that is going anywhere until they literally run it into the ground and looking at Madam Web, we might be around that corner. Um, but <laughs> how, how was it? Because Star Trek conventions were – it like you know galaxy quest was like you know kind of poking fun at you guys and like oh you guys know that the layout of the enterprise and how everything works and stuff like that how was it with the rest of popular geek culture catching up with you guys like now everybody knows all the middle earth facts everybody knows all the mcu facts like normal i don't want to say normal people but like everyday people they they watch all 40 properties of the MCU and the DCEU and the Snyderverse and everything. How was it watching the rest of geek culture rise in popularity and catch up with your diehard nerdiness? I I think the biggest mistake you can make as a podcaster about a thing is to classify yourself as an expert in that thing because then you're just going to get the nerd react Mm-hmm. Anytime you have any kind of slip up, anytime you you mess up a thing or a date or a fact or a name or whatever. So I think uh, Ben and I were very specific in coming out of the gates in a non-academic way, in a kind of embarrassed to be doing this kind of way. Uh, that really works for us. You know, if you want an academic type of Star Trek podcast, there are many of those that do a great job at that. And that's just not... That's not us, and it doesn't. It's not something we want to be. Yeah, and I also didn't. This was my first Star Trek convention ever, too. And had I, uh, to your point, Adam, had I ever said I'm an expert in this, um, I would never have allowed myself to go on stage because I would be afraid of what the um, uh, immense knowledge I don't have about Star Trek stuff. Um, but I, I think what I've experienced, kind of what you're talking about, Ben, is like. I didn't know that geekdom could be a culture and something that you could easily bridge the gap with, with somebody Um, like, like the way the Beatles are. You can talk to almost Mm -hmm. anyone about the Beatles and go, Oh, I have a shared experience with that. And now almost everyone you meet has a shared experience except for Adam about Lord of the Rings. (laughs) So (laughs) of all people. I do want to ask you, how do you feel about the new Sam Mendes movie that got announced? I have no idea what you're talking about. Sam Mendes. the, The Fab Four thing? Or he Sam Mendes, the director of um, uh, what is it like? Oh my god, I'm blinking on literally everything. The World War One movie that just came out. Um, uh, I know nothing. 
I'm oh my I'm Revolutionary Road Road to Perdition. Very oh, good director. Oh, okay. Okay. He is directing mm-hmm. four separate movies, one on each of the Beatles. So I got this news while waiting in line at Bank of America America today, so I have very little awareness of what's actually happening. If listen, I have no problem with any Beatles media. So it could be very exciting. Um but yeah, I I was going to I run this term by Ben really quickly like a couple weeks ago when we did our fa- uh, high fantasy football draft. And I don't know I've run this by you yet, Adam, but I feel like you're under this header too. How do you feel about bro nerd? Like that being your moniker or like the way you would like identify? Do you think of yourself as a bro at all? No, I really don't. <laughs> but you have I'm, some. I'm, dude. I'm a little offended. <laughs> well, let's let's agree on what you mean by bro. Like, I I do also like sports. I do also like uh, like partying. Uh, but like, I'm not like. There's something bullying sounding about sure. a bro that I am very very not so i definitely don't mean it on as a bullying term Mm -hmm. i more mean it as like our approach to geek culture where it's it's not our it's not our only like like i'm not a bro geek but it's not my only thing that i'm like good at i like sports i like it's not your identity right but you also you also do bring yeah what's a better word than bro you bring this like dude energy to geek world yeah, we try to make it uh, kind of a kind of a party, kind of a fun place to be, a fun place to have those conversations. Like we, when we talk about Star Trek, we talk about it from a perspective of like, what's the what's the absurd part of this? What is fun and funny? Uh, not in a cutting kind of way, not in a it punching in a up way that mostly. Like, yeah, yeah, we're not. I mean, this is a. Uh, like the people that I love and care for the most are the ones that I make the most comedy at, you know. <laughs> sure, totally. And it's like that for Star Trek. Like that's that's why it's a comedy show that we're doing. So I just selfishly wanted you on our show, Ben. I think I mentioned this lightly off air. I doesn't really know that much about Lord of the Rings, which oh, is oh okay, which is really wonderful, and we're gonna poke fun at you for that. Oh, good. Yeah. By making you do the ultimate Lord of the Rings quiz, <laughs> we're gonna. This is gonna be humiliating. Exactly. I felt... I'm gonna be your least favorite guest on this show because you're gonna be so unhappy, or because people are gonna be. A... People are gonna hate me. No. See again. We no. Don't... Did you see the Dakota Johnson stuff? Where uh, what's his name? Josh Horowitz was like, "Can you name all three Tom Holland movies?" And she's like, "Uh, Spider Man, uh, Far from um." Far from spiders, and it, was, and it was just like it went viral. It's just the best thing ever. You're, made you're everyone... measuring my success at this quiz on a Dakota Johnson scale. <laughs> I mean, the only <laughs> thing she has on you is being coming. a nepo. Uh-huh. She's just a nepo baby. That's that's all she's got on you. You're just as talented. Before, oh, you're very talented. Before we get started, we're gonna have you draw a tarot card of from the Lord of the Rings tarot deck. Okay, What's your... how do I do that virtually? You're just gonna tell me when to stop, and when I okay. stop. Then that's going to be your card. Are are you okay. at all astrologically inclined, or is this just who? Oh, uh, I'm I'm ass curious. Okay, great. All right, you just I'm going to start. Okay. doing. You tell me when to stop. Please make this as awkward as possible. It's a good audio. It's good audio yeah, right here. Yeah, quality. All right, stop. Ooh, okay, that's your card. Let's see, and I'm not going to tell you. Okay. Uh, it is the eight of rings. I don't, oh, I don't know. yeah. Let's I didn't see what know that eight means. rings existed. As I recall, the rings are pretty important. Well, you know, we'll franchise. We'll see right? how much you recall when we get to the. Quiz. Yeah, don't don't jump ahead. <laughs> don't try and get any answers out of us. Who knows? Maybe it's all uh, if a twist. If you're not if you're not watching the video of this, Jess has just begun to unfold what looks like a a world map. Like it's been folded twenty four times, and it's now opening up into like something that your parents would keep in a car to oh, drive cross country yeah this is definitely our thomas guide to tarot for sure wow so this is all of the tarot cards and their uh-huh. meanings uh whether okay. they are delivered upright or reversed yours was delivered upright and it was in fact the eight of rings i read the roman numerals correctly good job jessica and mm-hmm. upright is just as aragorn was what was just as aragorn was when trained by elrond 
you are being called to hone your skills. The Whoa. Eight of Rings provides encouragement, assuring you that you are on track. Continue to study, ask questions, and practice. Soon, you'll master whatever you set out to learn. Wow, hey, that's how encouraging. Apt. I like that. It is apt as well for all the questions we're about to yep. ask you right now. Before we get into the quiz, though, is... Lord of the Rings just something that doesn't interest you, or just you have a you don't care to dive deeper past having watched the films once. Is it is it a version, or is it just what what is it for you? I really really enjoyed the Peter Jackson films, and I can't really explain why my interest stopped there. Like I liked, I don't like reading just one type of book. I don't like watching just one type of show. Even like my life being so yoked to uh Star Trek and its and its many franchises, its many its many series. Like I like doing other things. I like watching other things too. It's not it's not just all one mono nerd culture for me. Totally. And just and it just hasn't landed on Lord of the Rings past what interested you, it sounds like. No, yeah, yeah, that's it. And and I respect the game. I respect those that uh that give it the kind of treatment that you have. But yeah, I'm a total uh, dilettante when it comes to Ooh, to this words all right are you ready for this i'll never be ready for this let's go okay <laughs> Good, I'm best excited. Of luck. i can't cheat right like i should close my my browser windows and like i gave yeah. you no i gave you no rules what do you think ben we gotta is this we an, used to do this for the this is the an open book trivia. quiz i gotta see your hands you gotta keep your hands oh. where i can see them so i no uh no fingies typing that's clever. Right. That's clever. Mm. Hands, hands where I can see him. I want to be thoughtful book cover, Adam. <laughs> exactly. Hmm. Or if you guys aren't that... watching this on video, Adam's about to drop the hardest Christian rock album you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my brother just won a Grammy for a uh, Christian album he wow. just produced. I know. That's a Grammy's huge. Holy uh, crap. It is huge. It's, I'm... Did, what did the cover look like? I'm sure it's the dude doing yeah. the prayer hands. Um, also, I, uh, we don't need to share our feelings on him, but he is also the producer on the second tra track of Al uh, Kanye's new album. So he's killing it right now. Yeah. Jeez. I know. All right. Let's go. I think it's 20 or 30 questions. They should go rather quickly, though. We'll see what happens. I had to. I'll hold my hands. <laughs> this is going to be uncomfortable. No. Look, yeah, I'm just going to honor system this. You don't have this. to. Yeah, you don't have to. All right. The Lord of the Rings begins with the party celebrating what? And these are multiple choice. And so you mm -hmm. might, you know, luck into this. And I think it also favors the movie. So this is helping you. It's not like book lore. Bilbo's 100, 111th birthday, the new year, Mary's birthday, Gandalf's arrival to the Shire. Uh, the first one, the 111th birthday. Great. Ding, ding, Wonderful. Ding. Uh, for those of you following along, this is on quizzoto.com. We'll link this quiz should you be interested. Bilbo's <laughs> yeah. birthday. Yeah, I don't know why you would be. Uh, Bilbo's birthday is also his farewell party. He makes a dramatic disappearance dur during his birthday speech and escapes. He leaves the one ring at Bag End for Frodo to have and departs for Rivendell. Mm. Wow. Yeah. You should, do you I feel didn't know that. We all wanted That's... to leave our own birthday party a little early. <laughs> it's like True. The, story. the ultimate the Irish dream. goodbye, Bilbo Baggins. Yeah. Oh, hell, yeah, for sure. Shirish goodbye, maybe? Shirish. Oh, I like it. I'm using it. All right. Adam's proving his worth now as our guest. Um, who is Arwen's father? Oh, by the way, your points get higher the more you get correctly, like Ooh, multipliers. I know. The questions okay. get harder. I like that. The incentiv the incentivizes you. Okay, so who is Arwen's father? Gandalf, Sauron, Elrond, or Aragorn? Who is the third one? Uh, Elrond. Kind of want to say Elrond. Is that your final answer? This doesn't sound like it's right. Is that your final answer? I'm just going to ask that yes. every time now. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Ding! Arwen is the daughter of Elrond, the half-elf lord of Rivendell. When she falls in love with Aragorn, she must choose between a life of immortality. Do we want to read these? <laughs> I think no, this was we, the Liv uh, Tyler character in the movie, right? It was, yes. Yes. Um, 
we don't need to read these, but I, I, it also might help you for future questions. Uh, and also, Quizoto wants yeah, you to know. Yeah, you never know. Someone might stop you on the street and ask you, who is who is Arwen's father? <laughs> I'm lucky these questions are hewing so close to film stuff, because if you were going to go deep book stuff, I'd oh, get killed. deep book stuff, no. Neither of us. I mean, we have some extraneous knowledge. That was not my goal, was to ultimately humiliate you. This was more, I just yeah, wanted to- Save that for in-person stuff. But that's yeah. more fun. Though, my, my, my purpose here, if this wasn't clear, which it doesn't sound like it was, was to literally see how much you retained from just watching the movies once, and that being yeah. the only thing. So you're doing very, and obviously culture exists where you're kind of like, oh yeah, Mr. Anderson is the dad. Like, that stuff happens. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. You're streaking. Quizwoto wants you to know that. The okay. Hobbit's first... Two? <laughs> it says you're streaking. Okay, Quizmodo. All right. All right. Uh, the Hobbit's first encounter, Strider, in an inn in Bree. What is the name of the inn? Ooh. I know. Big jump. Big I jump. I know. I know. A, the husky horse. B, the prancing pony. C, the foolish farmer. D, the merry mule. I'm going to say Prancing Pony. Nice. Good job. I do want to go to the Husky Horse, though. I can't lie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're definitely that, like draft horses, like 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 washed up slides. That's, that's the dive yeah. bar. Prancing Pony is the nice inn. Husky Horse is the dive bar it's, where you might get stabbed. <laughs> it's the ones, it's, it, it, it's, it's the Husky that, it's the Clydesdale that they should have shot, but didn't. <laughs> <laughs> what, what competition? <laughs> Do Legolas and Gimli undertake? I won't even clarify who Legolas and Gimli are. An eating competition, a height competition, a drinking competition, an archery competition. I mean, I know Legolas is, is an archer, so I'm inclined to choose that one. Is that, that your final that's answer? That's going to be my answer. Okay, yeah. great. Wrong. Uh, so you have lost. Damn the, it. You have lost the streak. I will. Oh. Read, you know what, I'll, I'll do this when we read. We'll read the ones so that you get clarification as to why you got this wrong. Uh, Gimli challenges Legolas to a drinking game, not knowing that elves are mostly immune to the effects of alcohol. As Legolas notes that he may be noticing a tingling in his fingers, Gimli passes out from drunkenness. Mm. To your point, I think you get like half a point, even though it won't count. Because they do compete against how many orcs they slay. So there is also that. But they actually engage in a drinking competition. I was going to say, I could challenge that question's validity. Because huh. they, right. they do do multiple competitions throughout the trilogy. How many orcs did you slay? And then how much can you drink? That's yeah. on me. I should have asked which competition you're referring to. Well, it's That's... on the game. It's not, it didn't clarify necessarily. Yeah. But all right. Here we go. When Frodo can no longer walk, how does Sam help him complete the journey to Mordor? A, he takes the ring for him. B, he lends him his pony. C, they summon the great eagles to help. D, he, caros, he carries Frodo on his back. Oh, carrying on the back. It's a very powerful moment. I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you. Exactly. Very powerful. You, you see, you remember it a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe this is just an easy quiz. Maybe you don't deserve to feel that. Hey, about you it. know what? It's okay. <laughs> like that. That's what <laughs> ben, surprised you're me. You're so sweet. It, it went from it went from oh, who's L? Like who's Arwen's dad? To, What's the name of the inn? And where do they? Go? Like, oh, <laughs> wow, that was a big jump. I, I think this is like yeah. This step. Also, I took this quiz to make sure it was like the right one, and mm -hmm. the order doesn't stay the same. So I think there are varying degrees of questions. Oh, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's interesting. Um, so you can't memorize the answer, I guess, because I guess a lot of people are taking this quiz. Uh, all right. Next question. Who comes to aid at the Battle of Helm's Deep and the Battle of the Pelennor Fields? A, the Army of the Dead. B, Gandalf. C, the Great Eagles. D, the Elves. Who comes to help? Okay. I don't think the army of the dead would come to help. Uh, who's the last one? The elves. Yeah, I think the elves are going to help. All right. Elves are very helpful. Is that what you think about elves? Is that like, it, you, it, it is what I think. I mean, it may be an ugly stereotype. <laughs> and it may get me canceled with your, with your audience. But yeah, I'm going to go. Elves are helpful. Great. Incorrect. That's just what I think of them. Incorrect. 
Aragorn, accompanied by Gimli and Legolas, take the road under the mountain to summon the army of the dead. Promise. Oh. Say Helm's Deep, though. It is confusing. Yeah, it does. It does say it's in this. Quite, oh, I didn't even notice that when I took it. So the elves do come to Helm's Deep. Yeah, the mm-hmm. army of the dead comes to Pelennor Field. That's why I was like, is the answer Gandalf? Because like, I guess he does come to Minas Tirith too. But I when I did this, I answered question. Gandalf too. It is a confusing question. But basically, the army of the dead does Pelennor Fields. You're half and right. That's exactly You're half right. Ben. Yeah, you really are. Uh, this is also a weirdly phrased question, but it does make sense. What happens immediately after Boromir tries to take the ring from Frodo? Oh, I have to this tell is you. not a multiple no, choice I have to question. Tell you. No, you just have to know. <laughs> you should have. That's how it gets harder, you, too. If you had seen my heart rate. I was like, I hope, I hope Adam's having fun. I was thinking way too much. I like definitely uh-huh. had an out-of-body experience. And then... You and me both. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, I'll re-answer, re-ask the question. What happens immediately after Boromir tries to take the ring from Frodo? A, they are, ambush- they am- they are ambushed by orcs and Boromir protects Frodo. B, Boromir is exiled by the Fellowship. C, Boromir, Boromir kills himself trying to take the ring. D, Frodo hands over the ring. I'm going to say exile. Oh. You can't try to steal the ring. Can't do it. Yeah, you're so right, but wrong. Um, <laughs> when Boromir is seduced. Oh, I thought the question was what should have happened. Oh. That, that was my answer. Yeah, it was confused sure. there. I okay. understand. You're so right. You're so right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm so sorry for not letting that be so clear for you. When, when Boromir is seduced by the ring, it tends... That is so condescending. <laughs> oh. You love it. When Boromir is seduced by the ring, it tempts him to forcefully take it from Frodo. Boromir immediately regrets this when the spell is broken. Orcs then ambush the party, and Boromir defeats an impossible number of orcs before finally being killed. These actions demonstrate that Boromir is noble and honorable at his core. I don't know. That's an opinion. Did you say he killed an impossible number of orcs? That's what they said. Yep. That's impressive. So he did. He did. Um, he immediately regrets after the spell kind of lifts from him. And uh-huh. you see the regret. But Frodo has put on the ring at this point, takes off. Um, he actually, in, in essence, tries to protect Merry and Pippin from. That's the thing is that, again, like I was hearing the options and I'm just like, he doesn't protect Frodo. He protects Merry and Pippin. So it's maybe it's... I failed. Maybe I'm the failure here. <laughs> In finding these quizzes that are inadequate on the stream. It's okay. Right. I'm just I'm just being a nitpicker. Well, you know what it is? You already I say this all the time on, on my own shows. It's not your fault. You did nothing wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I promise. I'm really trying. I'm really trying, guys. That makes me feel so much better. Eowyn expresses her affection for Aragorn, but he does not return it. Whom does she fall in love with later? Oh, oh that's a good one. That's this is a good, a good one. question. A, Legolas. B, Grima Wormtongue. Wormtongue. Mm. C, Faramir. D, Boromir. Legolas. Is that your final answer? Yes. Okay. No. After de- <laughs> after defeating the Witch King of Engmar, Eowyn and Faramir meet in the Houses of Healing. They fall in love later, settling in Ithilien. Yeah. Obviously. Do you even know who Faramir is? I I mean, who played him in the movie? <laughs> Some actor. See, that's <laughs> that's going to be how I know. Great. You're doing really well. You are, have, uh, let's see. I mean, I started by, by getting two right, and I've lost every one That's not true. You're no, four out of go. eight. Yeah. Okay. The, All right. Hey, that's okay. It's really not that bad. And again... Reminder. You know, a, a teacher who who would feel pity on me would pass me on to the next grade with a with a grade like that. Mm. Or they just didn't want to deal with you for another semester. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a few of those. <laughs> you're 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 less of a burden to them that way. Next question is: What is lembus? A. A type of pipe. B. A sword. C. Elven bread. D. A jewel. I'm going to pick the bread. Ooh. He's back on track, everybody. Give me the bread. All right. Good job. What makes you, do you just remember that or? 
No, just it felt doesn't right. it just sound like bread? Like if you were to go to a bakery, it does you know, sound there's... like a place where like you go to like a vegan place. It and, sounds and like it'd a kind there. of bread. It'd be like yeah. a you know uh, a yeast free bread or something like that. Like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It, I it also food. it's it it evokes manna kind of. I always thought like manna as like a version of bread because the way it sustained you and and mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. that's what. All right, good job. You actually did it. Good job. You're done now. I'm kidding. You make a a grilled cheese with manna. It's one of the best things you can do. <laughs> Just uh, slather some mayo on the outside before it hits the pan. Do you have any uh, religious background? Is that were you no. like so? In, in, I mean, so I was brought a man up, of the uh, cloth. <laughs> Stop. God, was, you guys are good. <laughs> I mean, I was brought up religiously, uh, but like uh, I rejected it as soon as I was old enough to. I did the same exact thing, but I went to a Catholic school. So, like, you, mm. I learned about manna and stuff, and I had mm-hmm. this very vivid idea of what it tasted like and that I wanted it. Um, yeah, that's how they get you. They really, really they, they tease they tease the manna. <gasps> Little did I and know. And you thinking you're gonna ever get it. I actually did end up getting something called manna, but it was from a Muslim family. So little did they know. They failed mm. Catholics failed me. Yeah. Well, you're gonna get it from somewhere. <laughs> and I found it. Uh-huh. Who okay, next question. Who is the who is known for the quote, even the smallest person can change the course of the future? A Isn't that Gandalf? Didn't he say that? Are you just going to go for Gandalf? Yeah, I'm going right for it. Wow. Incorrect. Oh. <laughs> you didn't even see. Not a the bad lesson guess. There he is, says no, something should, pretty similar. I, I had confidence. That was my greatest, I respect it, honestly. greatest I respect mistake it. there. Yeah. It was the best moment of the podcast, really. <laughs> so far, so great. Uh, it's Galadriel. When the Fellowship visits Kara Gal- Galadhan. What is that? I've never... She has a direct uh, meeting with Frodo. Oh, oh, I've never, I literally don't even remember reading that. She has a direct meeting with Frodo in which she tells him that he has a greater destiny. Mm. Speaking of Kate Blanchett, uh, the Borderlands trailer just came out today. Whenever you're listening to this, it is February 21st. She still looks amazing. Is she in that? She's in Borderlands. I don't know if the movie's going to be any good. It looks a little goofy. Oh, it's a movie. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. It's a, a video game uh, movie, and she still is just killing it. No, she's a fire for sure. Um, do you have any, before we continue, Adam, are there any favorite Kate char- Blanchett movies? Well, I mean, we could talk about Steve Zissou all day, but uh-huh. um, but no, do you have like a character you remember being attracted to while watching the films at all? I mean, it's hard not to keep the candle lit for Liv Tyler. One million like, percent. This is this is like peak Liv Tyler too. It is peak Liv Tyler because uh, you really do believe she's an immortal elf. Um, if you're not watching Ben Affleck drive a bunch of animal crackers up her legs in uh, <laughs> that's the in, Arma- that in like, Armageddon, she if had... that doesn't do it for you, she's going to do it for you in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, this is right? True. Like, she had, she went from Empire Records to Armageddon. To this, it's just like it just kept and then going never up worked when you again. Didn't... <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Although we're going to see her in like the Hulk, probably. I think they're planning. On... I I bet you you will. Um. Anyway, yeah. No. Uh, you. I bet you all have done. You've like drafted people off of the movies. Like who's on your? Oh yeah. Who's on Arwen your Mount was Ringsmore? My wide wait receiver. on our what? Your your Mount Ringsmore, like like who's on? Oh, that's like cute. your Mount Rushmore that's of good. of of love interests from the movies. I, you have that? Well, we haven't done like a, an F Mary Kill. We should probably mm-hmm. do that. We just did. Ben came up with this great idea on Super Bowl Sunday to draft all the characters for a flag football team. So we've we've gone toe to toe. Good for that. one. It was brilliant, and I we gift that to you and Ben to do okay. on The Greatest Trick, which we, we will, toward the end of the show, talk about all the things you're oh, doing right now. Um, who's... Interesting thing about uh, about Ben, my co-host, is that he went to his very first football game last like year. Like physical football game? or Yeah, like an actual... We were, uh, we were in New Orleans for his 40th birthday, and we just happened to get tickets to the Saints game because we were there That's awesome. that Sunday. His very first football game that he'd ever Like not he'd even ever high watched. school. Yeah. What was his experience? He loved it. He did. How could you not? 
especially yeah. a Saints game. Like that'd be yeah. awesome. It was so fun. That's... It was fun to to see that through his eyes. I, By the way, I uh, Worf is my first round draft pick for running back. Worf famously tells a story on Deep Space Nine of him mutilating someone on a soccer field <laughs> when he was at the academy. <laughs> I know nothing and, about Star Trek. Like he killed and somebody? A, like, And according to me and my co-host Ben, we think he killed that guy <laughs> by kicking him in half. Yeah. And like the way he tells the story is is like in this long single and the camera like slowly moves in on his face as he's telling the story. And we laughed and laughed at this moment. He killed Penalty that man. take a different meaning in Star Trek. <laughs> you can't play intramural sports with Klingons. No. If you're if you're a human. And yeah. he's like one of the That's first crazy. Klingons that have been inducted into the mm-hmm. Federation, you know what it is? They're trying to make him feel normal. <laughs> you know, his jersey's up in the rafters. <laughs> yeah. Of every sport he ever played. Oh, and guess who's guess whose jersey is also in the, the rafters? The guy he split. The kid he killed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, two half jerseys being being raised no, to the top. The stadium is the memorial stadium for yeah. that kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, why are those two half jersey pieces still dripping? <laughs> Oh, because he reconstitutes every year in memory. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Gollum leads Frodo into the lair of what creature? A, the Nazgul. B, orcs. C, Shelob. D, a Balrog. Which one is the dragon? I don't know if I can, can answer that. That gives it away? I, I know. Wasn't this, uh, wasn't this a, a pit with a dragon in it? Some some giant. I'm gonna reptile. I'm gonna read the questions again. I think answer. Balrog sounds correct because Balrog sounds familiar uh, as a as a name in this universe. Very good, totally incorrect. Um, <sighs> so you're thinking of Smaug from The Hobbit, I am. or Smog, depending on uh, how. Uh, and the Desolation of. Of uh, there yes. there in yeah, yeah. and All Benedict right, yeah. Cumberbatch adjacent. Yes, yeah. you, you know, also some Star Trek crossover right there. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, so horribly incorrect. In hopes that Shelob would eat Frodo and discard the ring for him to collect, Gollum leads Frodo into Shelob's caves. The giant sp- spider Shelob is feared by orcs and goblins in the area, but Sauron permits her to stay as a guard of the pass. Can we agree permits that her. Let's the be word real. discard is doing a lot of work in that statement? Because what it really means is it will get pooped out after eating him, right? Yes. Gollum has like a special relationship with Shelob and Shelob doesn't want to eat material items that aren't fleshy. And so however that gets removed from uh-huh. the victim, it's, I don't that's even left think up she to the... Poops, she's going to poop it out. She like, like drains her <laughs> victims. Like she like liquid, like her venom liquefies like their okay. insides and then she just like <laughs> slurps them up. And so so he'd probably gonna... be able to retrieve it off of his body. Yeah, like after. off the off the the husk. He's on like a like a soft foods diet. Yeah, one hundred. That's how she's. She's able old. To... She's old. She... she got no teeth. I get it. Soft yeah. body. Yeah, she's yeah. squishy, crazy. Yeah, we all we figured it out. Who yeah. who is named a knight of Rohan following their heroic deeds? This is getting tough. A. It's getting tough. Mar- it is tough. A. Mary Brandybuck. B. Eowyn. C. Pippin Took. D. Aragorn. When you say Eowyn, it sounds like you're a kid saying Aaron. <laughs> Eowyn. Hey, hey, Eowyn. <laughs> That's going to be my guess, just for that. That's very sweet and totally wrong. Uh, Mary secretly accompanies... I'm on a bad street. You're, yeah, you're, you're now five out of 12. Uh, Mary secretly accompanies Eowyn to the Battle of Pelennor Fields after directly ordered to evacuate and stay away. Following the War of the Ring, Mary is named a Knight of Rohan. Mm-hmm. Eowyn. Eowyn. Eowyn Fields. Eowyn Pelennor Fields. She's um, literally <laughs> named a Knight of the Rohan, so I don't know she's a, she's a shield maiden of the Rohan. Uh, I love that very much. Um, are you a competitive person, Adam? Oh, yeah. This is... Uh, destroying me inside, me inside that i'm doing so poorly i've ruined relationships over my competitiveness so who's done the best at this uh, me because i'm the only other person who's taking yeah. this wow. yeah. you're, okay. you're a special you, case did you go undefeated right. in this jess 
I did not. I um I got tripped up on that Gandalf question too, where who who saved the day at Pelennor Fields? Yeah, and that's just a bad question. Though. It was a bad question. Um, but it really was me just like going, okay, is this unfair or is this the right level of did you watch the mm-hmm. movies or not? All mm-hmm. right, you're totally ready for this question. Okay, I think which evil being does the fellowship encounter in moria a nazgul b sauron c goblins d a balrog uh the first one was the nazgul right Uh Mm -hmm. that's gonna be it's gonna be my guess so you totally didn't listen to my hit hint saying that you were ready for this and that's wrong it was the balrog (laughs) god damn it it. (laughs) I'm trying to help you a little bit. And I guess I'm not doing a good That's enough job. That's why I'm so bad at improv. Like, I don't listen to to my my game partner. And this is how I lose games like this. To be Awful. To be fair. Embarrassing. You never want me on your trivia team, to be fair. You want me to be there to drink beside you, but you mm-hmm. never, like, mm, so okay. I, I, I will not win a game for you. And I'll be aggressive. <laughs> About how poorly I'm doing, too. Uh, Pippin, ad- uh, I'll read this quickly. Pippin accidentally awakens the orcs residing in Moria, but Gandalf soon realizes that another creature has awakened a Balrog. Balrogs are powerful demonic creatures. Uh, the Fellowship is able to escape Moria only because of the sacrifice of Gandalf, who falls into a great crevasse during Ooh. battle with the Balrog. I know. Oh, was that the you shall not pass yes. moment? Yes, yes. I love that moment. <laughs> Who doesn't? That was that was great. Who doesn't love that moment? It's a special moment. Yeah. Uh, all right. Met, uh, how many? Oh God, we're not even halfway through. <laughs> oh so my sorry. gosh. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> oh God, what's we're having too much? How fun? many questions have we done? I didn't. What's five plus thirteen? Eighteen. Yeah, that's it. Um, this Ma- is like an SAT test. It's okay. We'll go, we'll, go, we'll go more quickly. Many of... God, stop, you guys. Many of the elves chose not to join the final alliance against Sauron. Where did they go? A, Lothlorien. B, Mordor. C, Rivendell. D, Valinor. Uh, Rivendell. Totally wrong. Also, really tough question. Very tough question. They go to Valinor, which is like on a different not plane. easier. A different plane of existence. I like how you say really tough question, but you have to be like, really wrong, by the way. <laughs> so wrong. Both things could be true. It's true. <laughs> and they were. You're so wrong. <laughs> have you thought about being an educator? Like, like, like being a teacher? Because I feel like you would be people's favorite teacher and maybe the most hated teacher. Like, almost evenly split. Like... Like, Miss Verity, kind of rules, <laughs> but oh my God, if you're wrong, like you better keep your grades up. I will. She will murder you. <laughs> I will make you feel scared for uh-huh. getting things wrong so that when you are asked the question again, you'll never get it wrong again. It's a tactic for sure. That's the I kind of motivation I think works. a lot of kids would like. <laughs> well, and, and Ben's about to go to Japan to teach English. Are you learning a skill set for me right now? Yes, I'm definitely learning. Put the fear of God into <laughs> children for speaking out. And yeah. <laughs> you can see how I was raised, clearly. Which items do Bilbo give to Frodo? Wait, wait. Which items does Bilbo give to Frodo ahead of his journey to Mordor? An elven brooch and a cloak? B, mithril chain and the sword sting? C, the one ring and mithril chain mail. D, lembus and cheese. Mm, that's a good one. Is it? It doesn't it's give tough. him the ring, right? That's Ooh. dumb. It's lembus and cheese be, sounds good. I feel, like, uh, I feel like it's armor and, and dagger. Good Boom. job. He's that was, back, everybody. Yeah. He's back. It was back. a trick question, kind of, because he yeah. Let, does. Yeah, yeah, good job. That was very good. You did it. See, I mean, I feel like the food would come later. Like, I'm gonna probably take that last. They they need the lembus when it comes for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Who stabs Frodo in the Fellowship of the Ring? A. Boromir. B. Mm-hmm. Sauron. C. An orc. D. The Witch King of Angmar. Oh, uh, the third one. Incorrect. Well, the last one. It was. It was the last it was, one. He got it. I. I'll get I it. was. I was waffling between the two. I just needed to be 
more deceptive. I should have also asked if that was your final answer because I, I selected that you got it wrong. So um, while camped at Weathertop, the hobbits foolishly make a fire alerting the <laughs> ring race to their presence. Although Frodo wears the ring to become invisible, the witch king can still sense presence and stabs him with a morgul blade. I know we're doing this quiz for fun, but you were wrong technically. <laughs> so just letting you know. Mm. It's important to know when you succeed. <laughs> It's not fun unless you keep score. It's very I, true. That's how I operate, and that's why I have very yeah. few relationships. What is mm. the alternate name, alternative name for Minas Tirith? A, the White City. B, the Dying Tree. C, Minas Morgul. D, Umbar. Tough question. The, the Dying Tree. There is a Dying Tree. In Minas Tirith, I didn't ask you again if that was your final question. It's not correct, but the White City is correct. Hmm. The White City. Maybe the White City should do something about that dying tree. They do. Kind yeah. of an eyesore. It is an eyesore. It's a real uh, burden on the people. You know, and, and sick trees are dangerous, too. They can fall on houses, fall on people, oh. come down in a storm. This is... This is where the bro girt, like new nerd is coming out right now. Let's 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 be a good neighbor. Take care of the tree. Yeah. <laughs> Very... Can we do that in the White City? Tolkien would agree. What is the name of Gandalf's horse? A. Oh. I know. Uh, a. Hasufel. B. Windfola. C. Shadowfax. D. A. Rod. It's not Trogdor. <laughs> He burninates, but not in the same way. Uh, it's it's definitely shadow facts. Nice, good job. You're you're getting good job. Se seven out of eighteen correct. Den oh, this this question's annoying. Denethor asks Pippin to sing a song for him on the eve before a great battle. Pippin sings the line. This is why it's annoying. I'm gonna have to recite all of these for you. Oh my gosh! Can you sing them all? Sing it. Sing it. Okay. <laughs> hey. Home is behind the world ahead, and there are many paths to tread through shadow to the edge of night. All right, that's one. That's B, one? That's one. Oh B, my gosh. Far over the misty mountains cold, to dungeons deep in caverns old, we must away ere break of day to seek the pale enchanted gold. That's B. C. A new road or a secret gate, and though we pass them by today, tomorrow may we come this way and take the hidden paths that run. You definitely regret me singing this because I won't commit to it. D, sweet is the sound of the pouring rain and the streams that fall from hill to plain. Better than rain or rippling brook is a mug of beer inside this took. <laughs> And she's buying a stairway to heaven. to heaven. Adam managed to convince me to sing at a karaoke bar, and um, it was under much duress. I I can you sing. You absolutely destroyed. You brought the house. Down. It was a very. I'm glad I did it. I you brought, you gave me you give me confidence in general. I felt safe. I just don't like to perform because I do. I can sing. It's very uncomfortable for me. The thing about karaoke is you want to do it in that private room. Like, you don't want to do it in a bar that has karaoke. That's not fun. That's terrifying. Oh, see, but if I'm you get the like, opposite. I, if like... you get eight people in a room where they're serving you giant pitchers of beer or whatever, and it's like with your pals. And it like you, it's different. Sing it. Wait, so yeah. Ben, are you a singer? No, but uh, I feel like you, I, I don't know, just like that enclosed space of everyone just like only looking at you rather than like an open bar where. Some people are watching. Oh, you like the anonymity of the crowd, don't you? Yeah. And like, if you sing, you know, you sing, um, you know, Living on a Prayer, you don't need to sing it because everyone else is going to sing it with you. You don't sing, you know, Friends in Low Places. Like, you sing, if you can't sing, you sing a sing along song. Everybody with their beer in their hands is going to sing along with you. And you let the, the crowd do the heavy lifting. If I'm in a room with five of my friends, like, that's just me. That's just me, and I, like I well, feel then like I it's have like a rapt audience. And yeah. that's what I want. I it actually hurts my feelings when the audience doesn't think I'm good enough to pay attention. That's to. how my roommate is. My roommate is a really good <laughs> singer, 
My roommate's a really good singer, so like when people don't pay attention when he sings like Sam Smith or something, he gets upset. <laughs> it's ups- well, also bad choice. Don't sing Sam Smith at a karaoke yeah. bar. He's a good singer. Gotcha. Then I like I Houston. like finding out about my friends through their song choices in those. Adam's rounds. podcast host really still haunts his his performance haunts me to this day. It was uh, it puts the lotion on its skin. Yeah, it was something else, man. It really a tribute song to Silence of the Lambs. Uh, I'm just gonna, which I'd never heard before. He sang it. Nope, but also it was, it was amazing. It was haunting and amazing. Um, yeah. uh, what do you think? <laughs> I think the lyrics to see were the ones that I found the most like plausible. Like that, that sounded to me like it, it, it they, those are written and that was from the movie so i'm gonna go with that gotcha so all of these were set at different times that was not the okay. the one he sings the first one was the one he sings um it's called the edge of night and it's the hobbit walking song mm. um mm. but good try good try so i'm gonna try a new tactic good good effort hey that feels good okay yeah, thanks you're welcome mm. really Sounds trying hard over here somehow what speed <laughs> that's just is it, you know this has never happened to me before <laughs> <laughs> yeah it happens to all I'm guys not u- i'm not yeah. used to so many people watching <laughs> <laughs> only in a group of your friends uh yeah. what species is Gollum? a orc b mm-hmm. hobbit c goblin d elf i thought he was a hobbit i thought he was a hobbit turned, boom boom turned, final turned answer lock it in let's go nailed it yeah he was a early hobbit essentially mm-hmm. good job mm-hmm. How does Gondor summon help in battle? A, sending word with a horse messenger. Mm. B, the beacons of Gondor. Mm. C, Gondor doesn't send for help. Oh, D, trick question. Right. D, great eagles. I, I like the, the beacons of, eagles. of Gondor. But with if you're using a horse, do you just like slap a horse on the ass and like off it goes carrying your, yeah, your bag of Yeah, it's like a carrier mail? pigeon. It just returns to where it's from. There's a lot. That's there's exciting. a lot to uh, unpack that happened. I think if Rohan was sent, they're the horse people. They they could send a horse, and people would know. Oh, this is a horse of Rohan. They need mm-hmm. help. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shadowfax would also be able to communicate to uh, Gandalf because he's pretty smart. Why do you like how I say eagles? How do I say eagles? I don't say eagles. 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 I eagles. my my Catholic school was the eagles. So I, oh, okay. Owen's egos. Eagle. Owen's. E- Owen's. Owen's egos. I, I love the egos. Uh, <laughs> so you got the because of Gondor correct which sword oh you're streaking again by the way they want you to know mm. which Ooh. sword does Elrond reforge A. Glamdring B. Sting C. Mm. Orcrist mm. D. The sword of Elendil mm. uh, the first one incorrect the sword of Elendil is preserved at Rivendell and Shards Elrond theorizes the blade is crucial to the battle of good and evil and he reforges it into Andrew Will and do yeah, you gotta Andrew. hope he's right about that. He, he takes a lot of work to do a reforge. He has foresight, so he's pretty good at knowing yeah. what will what will. Does he also have forge sight? Because that's what you need <laughs> to make a decision like that. The guy who made the rings did for sure. Mm-hmm. What yeah. is Gollum's favorite? That's a good joke. That's gonna be the title of this episode. What is Gollum's favorite food? A. Hobbit flesh. Oh. B. Li- no. B. Live fish. Mm. C. Goblins. D mm. rats. Oh, I remember watching him eat a live fish. Uh, who knows if he likes it the most? But I think I I'm almost positive I saw him eat one. I think it's certainly preferable to orcs, which he will also eat if need be. But yes, it's uh-huh. live fish. I think I think he would. He- orcs gotta be tough yeah. as meat goes, right? Because they also eat each other sometimes when their meat isn't on the table or on the menu. If, on the menu, if you eat hobbits. That's there's no coming back from that. I don't think I'd put it past Gollum though. Yeah, he, well, oh, he was, was going to eat Bilbo. He was definitely going to eat Bilbo. I mean, maybe if they had been in the same plane crash in the Andes, you 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 go to that Donner party of eight. people. Yeah, yeah. Who is Elisar? A. Oh. Boromir. Oh. B. Aragorn. Mm-hmm. C. Gandalf. D. Mm-hmm. Legolas. By the way, if you're taking this quiz, they show you pictures. Which makes the answers really obvious. 
So okay, so what picture are you seeing? Uh, I won't tell you until after no. I answer. You almost got me though. I really it's do. A podcast. Want... We. It's not visual. <laughs> what Unless was the Patreon. What was the name of the question? Who is LSR? LSR. LSR sounds uh, sounds elvish. So let's uh, let's choose the elf. Uh, was which is the last one, right? You said Legolas. Uh, Legolas. Yeah. Final answer. Yeah. Okay. You were like so half correct because Aragorn was raised by elves, so they called him El- uh, uh, Elisar. You know, uh, half correct can still get you into trouble and can still satisfy. Yeah. I, I've had plenty of half correct nights and it's been great. Yeah. Uh, Galadriel gives the name Elisar to Aragorn. You just got to try other things if you're half correct, you know? <laughs> as long as you communicate and yeah. respect each other. Yeah. In the return of the king at the Battle of the Pelennor Fields, who defeats the witch king of Angmar? A. Mewi. B. Mm. Fawamil. C. Gandalf. D. Eowyn. Well, not the last two. I'm going to go with the second one. Faramir? Yeah, Fawamil. Fawamil. It is Uh Eowyn. It is Eowyn. It is. So the witch king is the... Main king, Nazgul dude, who is like f- formerly a human, now a ghost form, and he claims while he's about while he's facing down Eowyn that no man can kill him, and she takes off her helmet and she says, "I am no man," and then stabs she, him in the face. She takes off her helmet and sixpence none the richer starts, <laughs> and she like Kiss shakes out me. her ponytail. Her glasses and, fall off while she does yeah. it, and she is. Beautiful, like in a way that you didn't really notice up until yeah, then. Yeah, coming down the stairs, ready for prom. Yeah, you're right, and and actually, it's her beauty that kills him. Next question. That figures. Yeah, who is thought to resemble Luthien? The elf made him. This is the worst question, and so unfair to you. Who is thought <sighs> to resemble Luthien? The elf made him. The elf <laughs> made him. <laughs> made him. Damn near killed him. <laughs> The elf maiden of Doriath and the most beautiful elf elf in history. A. Galadriel. B. Arwen. C. Rosie Cotton. D. Awen. Are we boring you, Ben? Sorry. No, I don't know. I had my coffee and a Celsius before this, and I'm still just like struggling. I'm sorry, buddy. What is up with Celsius lately? I feel like that is I I'm encountering nothing. it in the world all the time. It's weird because I buy the packets on Amazon and add it to water, uh-huh. and that's like pretty tasty. But then I remember uh, when I was at doing a, a gig, they had the can Celsius, and I drank one. I was like, "Oh, this is not as good." Uh, so I prefer the little packets that I make here at home. Great time to mention podcast of the ring sponsored by Celsius today. Oh God, I use wish. the offer code. Podcast of the Rings to save 30% off your first order. Uh, Legal disclaimer, oh no, don't do that. (laughs) Oh yeah, not yet, not until we we email them. Yeah. Uh, Also, did not put the background on this until just now. Who is- Start it over. Who is thought- Yeah, it's okay, Adam, you can hang out for another hour while we do this question. Mm -hmm. Who is thought to resemble Luthien, the elf maiden of Doriath and the most beautiful elf in history? A. Galadriel, B. Arwen, C. Rosie Cotton, D. Eowyn. And just so you know, we're sort of almost done with this. And I'm there's, an, there's an answer that's sort both of almost Arwen, done with this. Arwen and Eowyn are, are possible answers of the same question. Arwen yes. and Eowyn are you gotta two, be kidding di- me. two different people. Do you just play this game with people until they quit? <laughs> like, yeah. How, what, how far what, have I made it compared to the others? over is that you like... <laughs> There, we've we've overnighted a gun on your doorstep right now. If you want this podcast to end, I'm gonna I'm gonna tie my mic cable around my neck. Jesus Christ! Wish for death. (laughs) Well, death will never find you with this quiz, Adam. It's like those videos where you're like, okay, you guys are going to really love this test. So the pro- the thing is, and they never show you the thing that I was... <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like the episode like, of like, Community. It's like where... you're telling... 
where it's like the test is being like, oh, we're gonna we're gonna start in five minutes, and then you just never start. How you just long keep will they about, sit? Yeah. How long will they sit and wait? Has a friend ever told you about a dream they just had, and you're like, F- <laughs> kill me. <laughs> so you're comparing this is, this your like experience that. to this. Cool, cool. I'm really. It's either Eowyn or Arwen. <laughs> that final answer. I'm gonna give it to you. It's Arwen. Who, yep. who is an elf? Eowyn. Eowyn is a, a woman, ma- like a, and, a, uh, a man. The, and the correct answer is also Liv Tyler, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Makes sense. That's that's how I know. This is also Fair. a tough question, too. Uh, who was the first ring bearer to voluntarily give up the ring? A, Bilbo Baggins. Ooh. I know. Yeah. A, Bilbo Baggins. B, Frodo Baggins. C, Gollum. D, Isildur. Ooh. Say that, say that as a baby, like baby talk. Is, you do? <laughs> is this a fetish that you're just learning about? Do you have an auto tracking <laughs> camera? Yeah, uh, yeah. When I move, that's when crazy. I move, uh, it's not like the monitor's moving; it's just the the camera's. How does it um, benefit you? <laughs> so when he ducks out of frame, laughing. I've been asked that him. question a thousand times about a thousand different choices I've made. <laughs> <laughs> well, is it just because you move a lot and it and it's helpful for you? Uh, or? It's it's a setting on the monitor. It's called uh, God. What is it called? Screen. Oh, it's stage manager is what it's called. Oh. I've got a I've got an Apple computer. Ah, and, oh, and that's what fancy, it does. Fancy, fancy. I like yeah. it because we're getting an interactive experience. Right. Yeah, you can get a tour of the whole studio space back here. So, Ben, a little bit of background. Adam just fit, like closed out this incredible cross-country, cross-international um, mm-hmm. tour for their podcast. Wow, and okay. Their fans, I got to see it here in Chicago, their fans are just giving them things, making cookies for them and yeah. art. And so no wonder you have like a million awesome things behind you. Yeah, I've got a lot of tchotchkes uh, sent in by fans of the show. That's awesome. It's great. That, like, is the brand, I think, more, is that, like, you're the friend that everyone goes, wait, you like Star Trek, too? And then everyone, like, feels glad that once they listen to your podcast, they found you as a friend. That's a really nice way to put it. I, that feels good. I would yeah. say that's, a, I, I, and I feel like Ben and I kind of accomplished that, too. Um, so what, what made you want to start your podcast, Adam? Because, like, they're, unlike, you know, Middle Earth, where, yeah, there's a lot of, you know, like, you know, side notes and like appendices and stuff like that there's really four books or Mm -hmm. yeah or five books with the silmarillion and you know six movies and we just got a a, you know a season of television there's not comparative to star trek there's not that much content but star trek that's where you fucked up yeah like you really needed to to choose something with a lot more so material. We're to failing cover. as I just kept saying Vampire Diaries, and Jess was like, uh-huh. "No, Podcast <laughs> of the Rings." <laughs> so what? Like, was it you know the original series? Was it Next Gen? Was it Deep Space Nine? Like, how do you feel about like? There's so much I could ask you about Star Trek because I wasn't a Star Trek kid. I watched the 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 movies the the Patrick Stewart mm-hmm. movies, and they're mm-hmm. good to varying degrees. I mm-hmm. really like all the the JJ verse movies. I know Into Darkness mm-hmm. is the 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 forgotten the forgotten one, but I, I like love, them all. I enjoy. I them. like they're they're fun to a certain degree, and I hear Star Trek Discovery has really found its or um, Strange New Worlds has really mm-hmm. found its mm-hmm. footing. So, like, what made you guys want to jump into like this like huge plethora of content? And like, what's your, for lack of a better term, angle? Well, it was accidental. Okay. About eight years ago, I was I was guesting on some podcasts and having a great time doing it. And me and my buddy, Benjamin R. Harrison, thought, let's see if we could do a podcast about something that we don't need to study or do any work for. Like, what's what's a subject matter that we both know that we could just come to the mic and, like, riff on for, for like, an hour a week? And, when, and it came clear that it was like going to be Star Trek The Next Generation, like a show we both grew up watching and really loving. And whenever we were in like mixed company or whatever, like we would like we would go off by ourselves and like make jokes and like bond over over the show that we we really love. And so the idea was to do a podcast about that. That would be practice for the show that we really gave a shit about, like the 
because what we wanted to do is figure out if we could work well together. Like a oh. podcast is mostly about the relationship and your ability to to work on a project over the long term, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. And it is about anything else. So we were like, let's do this for a little while. If it works, let's let's pick something like serious, like seriously funny that we could do yeah. and make that the real thing. And six episodes in to this throwaway podcast that we thought we were doing, we got a bunch of press. Uh, early on, our our listenership and subscribership like exploded immediately. We joined a network within the first year, and like we've been on this ride for eight years. Where That's awesome. the the thing the thing that we approached without the kind of seriousness you probably should when you're undertaking a a project. Like I think it kind of freed us to be our most self selves. In such a way that, like, we didn't ever have to change our personalities. We never had to change the format of the show. People really liked it right away. And so we just, like, kept going through all of this source material. We did Next Generation, the Deep Space Nine, and we're uh, about to wrap up Voyager. And then when new Star Trek came out, I mean, that was totally coincidental. Like, mm -hmm. when, back when we started doing the show, there was no new Star Trek. No one was ever going to make new Star Trek. And all of a sudden it happens. So. We start a second podcast show about the new Star Trek shows, Greatest Trek, and that really took off because people like watching the new Star Trek shows with us. And we started like foolishly doing live shows immediately. Like in that in that second year, we were like, let's do a West Coast tour. Like we've seen live podcasts before. How hard can it be? Wow. Oh, so wow. me and like, Ben not uh, even like intentionally a show, chose like a tour. Yeah. Oh, we're wow. uh, we have from the start, like we've never done an episode of the podcast about the movies. We save the movies for the tour. So every year that we tour, we choose a different Star Trek movie, tour that the entire time. The very first tour we did was about Star Trek Generations. Wow. And we uh, we did four dates down the West Coast for like 50 people. Wow. Each Heck room. Yes, dude. The That's fact that you get 50 incredible. people is awesome. Like. There's plenty in, of on the uh, first year, yeah. people in LA that would kill for a 50 person show. <laughs> sure. Well, now we're doing like hundreds and we're That's we're so doing awesome. like last year we did uh 18 dates. We went to London and did the London Podcast Festival. We've done we've done we may have done 100 live shows at this point uh over the years doing the tour and met so many fun people. It's it's just been the greatest. Like I used to be a professional video producer, like a corporate video producer where I would mm. like work with executives and like write scripts and like produce and, and shoot and edit and stuff. And when I was doing this hobby podcast with with Ben about Star Trek the Next Generation, like it got it got big so fast and I was freelancing and I just stopped picking up the phone wow. for all those jobs. And I just became a professional podcast host from there. I never quit that last job. I just stopped doing it. And now this is what I do. Most important question I'll ask, and then we'll get back to the quiz. Well. Do you call podcast pods? No. Thank God. He's he's a good one. He's a good one, people. <laughs> he's a good one. I mean, I say it I say it like jokingly. Like I know like I don't like that word, but I'll say it to be like nick. Like check out my pod. Kind of, yeah, exactly. Like say it to make fun of the term. Yeah. I mean, oh to be fair, it's the worst term. Well, you he could also have an alter ulterior opinion, and we'd still embrace you and accept you for who you are. Mm. Just mm. have a but little. I, but I'd like talk ab about you behind your back about that specific thing. What is your origin story? Is this the time where we can yeah, we can swap those stories? Yeah. Um, because we have about ten minutes left on the show, and okay. um, I don't care about the quiz anymore. The the show. How many more questions were there? I don't know, like five. It's not even worth it. Let's let's pass fail me. Did I did I pass or did I fail? You really put in a good effort, and you and, <laughs> and you. Yeah, we don't do pass fail here. We get E for effort. <laughs> you you failed. No, you failed for sure. Um, oh, that's so brutal. But as I wanted nothing less for than you to to have failed. You know, we're just learning. We're really learning about your retention skills. Um, you learn more about someone in their in their times of failure than. But success, you you, don't you have you seen these movies in twenty years? No. So that's that's no, right. I haven't. That's, like since like since I saw them in the theater. That's insane. 
that you know one what? that's insane Did- you haven't seen them, but also that you got any questions right. You remember back when the idea of an almost three hour movie was absurd? I feel like this was the movie series that began that conversation. Like, can you endure movies this long? But then you and had the Lord Housewives of the Rings films watching Titanic at four yeah. almost four hours before That's this. The thing. So. I feel like t- I, I, as much as I love these movies, I'll give that credit to James Cameron that Titanic was in the theaters for like almost a year, and middle aged women were going. Once a weekend to, also, to see Jack and Rose. You've never, so much so actually, that my father had to get a bootleg of Titanic so that she would stay at home and raise her children. She was going to see the movies so much. Um, Fair. Did you, I know, did you, you've never seen the extended versions either. Yeah. But. No, I'm I'm nodding no for the audio only folks. A nodding no, yeah. I had a buddy that I went to go see these films with who outed themselves as a movie sleeper and a movie snorer to the extent that I, that I think it affected our friendship and we would not go to see movies together after that. Like once, once it was disclosed, like, holy moly, the loudest snoring in Lord of the Rings. What? Uh, Don't go to the movies then. I know. I do yeah. think I did sleep through the finale, the, the third movie of this trilogy, though, because we. I think we did went, you go see him at midnight? I think that's what happened. Um, yeah. mm. My retention of what happened to me from middle school to like t- being twenty five, I forget a lot of things that weren't that. And it's obviously, I would forget sleeping in the movie theater, but sure. Um, so the quick the the story about this podcast was as I was falling in love with my geeky boyfriend over playing video games, it became clear he liked Lord of the Rings. We did a Lord of the Rings character ranking by the most bangable characters with him mm-hmm. online. Oh, that's fun. It's, we have a good time. And I'll have either of you on for, like, which, we'll do a Star Trek one with you if you want. Like, Oh, yeah, let's play that game. It's that's fun. so much fun. It's very... Um, Seven of eight, number one. That's your opinion? Um. <laughs> It's definitely Jordy LaForge for me. I'm I'm joking. <laughs> totally <laughs> fair. <laughs> Not at all. He's got no game. He's got he creeper. There are there are Star Trek fans in the audience now that are just totally baffled trying to think of who Seven of Eight might be. And if if is it not is that are, not her name? If they are as attractive as seven of nine, like <laughs> yes, like, who's, I told who's, you I know nothing about Star Trek. <laughs> who's the lady in the in the Borg charging alcove next to seven <laughs> of nine? Jess, like, that is how you do it. You don't bury someone when they're wrong. You just so, let them go on. <laughs> was she? Hot? You let them think they got it right, and so proud of their of their being. Adam is the better man. I never claimed to be better than Adam. It's fair. It's fair. I was just, I, I thought I was going to give Adam fuel, but instead I just totally made him feel awful. You know what, buddy? Seven of eight, you can have her. I would, <laughs> you know what? Because I knew Adam, I knew, Adam, I knew it picks. wasn't six of nine, but I was like, so is it seven of eight? <laughs> I would just meet, just meet those of, in the middle. <laughs> six of nine, a, a very triple x star trek that yeah that's the sure. that's the lord of the g-strings for for star trek yeah <laughs> which yeah. once we get to 15 or 10 patreon members we will do we will we will review the lord of the g-strings um so anyway yeah the the rings of power was happening and i said to alex my now boyfriend that this would be a cool podcast to do and as it was getting closer we talked about it and actually our first date online was after we talked about what we were going to do for this show and then when he was about to hang up, I said, oh, I don't want to stop talking to you. Would you like to still continue talking? And we watched, I know. Oh, that's great. We watched the Bo Burnham uh, inside and the entire oh. time. I know. Oh, my God. I know. That, that, like, that was so romantic. And you guys made the work. Like, I had a friend that went on a first date and they saw Manchester by the sea. I was like, oh, God. It ended up being perfect because it was so funny. And it was also, like, yeah. relating to everything everyone was going through. Yeah. And also, I learned all about, like, the music. He, like, it because mm-hmm. we were laughing. And I, what I could, what I always picture is just him, like, in his head going, oh, my God, Jessica likes me? Like, I'm sure he was freaking out the entire time so it, was, it ended up being pretty cute so That's alex good. alex and i now living together he's very busy with work and my friend scott said you know who's going to be the best host to replace alex ben goddard and i i kind of oh, knew that i didn't the, know i didn't know scott said that it was so nice. scott was the first person to put it in my head so what did scott say about me uh I, we'll, we'll say that later you just try to get adam pranica on the show <laughs> fucking dare you <laughs> 
I mean, you've been on this show before him, so he probably won't have anything nice to say at this yeah. point. Yeah, eat that. Um, so yeah, you failed, but not in our hearts. All right, I can accept that. Where are so I know your shows are on Maximum Fun, and what are the shows that you have currently happening? Uh, the Greatest Generation is our Star Trek podcast about catalog Star Trek shows. We're uh, about to wrap up Voyager right now. Crazy. Like, I think we have 10 episodes left of Voyager before wow. going on to Enterprise. But we have hundreds and hundreds of back catalog episodes about uh, Deep Space Nine and Star Trek The Next Generation. And we also cover, as they come out, the new Star Trek shows that are Ooh. on the streaming services. So every new Star Trek show that has been out we have an episode for and as they continue to come out uh we cover week of uh, the week that they come out brilliant so, uh yeah it's a really fun time and we're we do live shows around the country i think we're not going to do live shows this year we're going to take a year off you but... did so much so the following yeah, year a... me and jess will be opening for the greatest generation on the road i would and love that it'll be nothing but seven of eight talk and i'm sure every star <laughs> trek fan will love it I hope you're ready for a crucible because we tour hard. It's a great idea. Real hard. I, I'm, I would have never thought of this idea. It's a wonderful idea. I really wish this for us. Great idea, Ben. Um, Adam, I'm, I'm so sorry if this was not enjoyable for you in any way. If it wasn't, I would never tell you. Okay, I, I don't imagine you would. But if you just want to send the gun back, I'll. You can just. <laughs> yeah, it was really expensive. Oh yeah, so. there's there's actually a knock at my door. Yeah, we'll uh, from the delivery guy. I should go check on what that is. <laughs> Thank you again. Uh... You chow now a gun to me. <laughs> chow. I'm not even familiar Weird. With chow now. <laughs> also, we're it's actually also... Hello Fresh. So <laughs> okay, yeah. Use our code. <laughs> Use the code GUN to get 30% off your next order. Awful. One time offer if you know what we're saying. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, this is not a subscription service. It's not. <laughs> oh, I don't even know if I can keep this in. Thank you so much, Adam and Ben. Next till until next time. May our paths uh forever prosper and live long. You do know something. Thank you.